Happy New Year, first video of the year. Oh yeah, baby. And today I wanted to share my 2023 handbag wish list. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking, really dude, more bags so soon? Yes, dude, more bags, why not? So I have a total of eight bags on my wish list. The last one I'm still kind of iffy about only because I've had it on the list many of times and many of times I have taken it off. So it's a little bit up in the air. And I gotta be honest with you, some of these bags might surprise you or maybe the materials might surprise you especially because I have been very vocal about some of these uh, silhouettes in the past or some of these materials in the past that I've always said no not for me but it goes to show never say never all right so let's get started with the very first one and this one is definitely gonna surprise you and we're talking Louis Vuitton the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the Empreint cognac leather. Oh my goodness. I think I have been living under a rock because I didn't even know about this color. Maybe it's because I took a little time off of uh, Instagram and I feel like every time that I do that, I always feel like I have a fresh set of eyes when I log back in. Do you guys feel the same way? Anyways, I digress. So the Neverfull and the Empreinte leather in the color cognac. Holy cow, that color is absolutely gorgeous. And you guys know I'm normally not a big fan of Louis Vuitton's leather or their empreinte leather. I've had pieces in the past. I have the Felici, uh, but this color, I mean, I was just like, oh, <laughs> it is absolutely gorgeous. And then with that gold hardware, I think it looks insanely beautiful. I also like it in the Speedy 25 bandolier and the empreinte. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, there are many Louis Vuitton bags that have definitely caught my eye and many of them are not canvas. And that's another thing that might surprise you too because you guys know I love Louis Vuitton's canvas. I'm not a fan, once again, of their leather, but I mean, I could do a full on video of the Louis Vuitton bags <laughs> that have definitely caught my eye. Let me know if you guys wanna see that. But back to the Neverfull, I keep getting distracted. Uh, I, I mean, you guys know I love the Neverfull. It's one of my all time favorite bags. It's my ride or die when it comes to totes. And the, the cognac, this color is just, it is just absolutely stunning, stunning. And I like the fact that the leather makes it so much more carefree. You know, you don't have to worry about water stains or anything like that. It's a giant tote. I love the silhouette. So like I said, I think I have been living under a rock and I was just like, totally floored when I saw, when I saw this, when I saw this bag, when I saw the color and I was just like, <gasps> It literally took my breath away. And I know that sounds like such an exaggeration, but I honestly can't put it any better. It honestly took my breath away. That's how much I love this bag. So that is number one. Number two, the Fendi Fendigraphy in the size small. So many of you know that I am not a fan of the half moon bags or the crescent bags. Sometimes I find them to be very annoying. I don't think that they're very user friendly. I had one very similar to this style many, many moons ago. It didn't work out for me, but even with all of the red flags that I see for myself, I still absolutely love it. I think it is insanely gorgeous and I really like it in the fabric monogram, but I love, love it in the black, in the gray, and I also like it in that, um, it's kind of like a pinky beige. I don't care, but I think that this bag is stunning. I love the giant Fendi hardware on the bottom. And I know that a lot of people, on like some of the reviews that I've seen, a lot of people mention that that's a really big con because it makes the bag really heavy uh, because of that hardware. But I just, <laughs> I absolutely love it. I like the fact that it also has the, uh, the adjustable strap so that way you know if you wanted to make it a little bit longer if you will a little bit longer on your on your torso you have that option uh i think that the small size is a great size i don't think it's tiny i love the nano but for me personally the nano is not very functional uh, i think the small size has a good size because you can still fit quite a bit of items in there and i just I love the way that it looks. It's simple, but it's also very obnoxiously loud because of that giant Fendi on the bottom that I'm absolutely here for it. I think it is gorgeous, like beyond gorgeous. And I don't think it has a crazy price point either, uh, considering that it's all leather. But um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> who am I turning into? Like, dude, I can't stand these half moon bags. And here I am literally just 
drooling about this bag that I have seen, you know, for the last year or so, or for the last six months, I should say. But um, yeah, I, I think I think it is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. So that one, I think, also might have surprised you. Yes? Let me know if any of these uh, so far have surprised you. Uh, all right, the next one is the Lueve Puzzle Bag in the size small and the black on black on black. The monochromatic that came out, the monochromatic line that came out, I want to say... It was maybe four months ago now, four or five months ago. I know that they recently launched another line with the fabric straps. I'm not talking about that one. Uh, you guys know how I feel about fabric straps. But um, the, the one that I'm talking about, I actually discussed it on a previous Minx Monday. And um, I remember when I first saw it, it was on an article on the Purse blog. And the, the whole monochromatic, they have it in um, this beautiful, beautiful, like bright electric cobalt blue, kind of like this guy right here gorgeous. Uh, they have it in pink, uh, khaki, the khaki's gorgeous, but the black. The black absolutely <laughs> spoke to my soul. <laughs> I think it is gorgeous. And uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the strap that it comes with, just because I'm really not a fan of the, the puzzle bag straps in general. Um, so I'm not too crazy about it. I do like the fact that it's leather, uh, but I really like the whole black on black look. But I remember on that article, uh, they had another picture of the black one and they had the donut link, the donut chain link. I thought that it was part of the bag. Come to find out that that strap is completely separate. So <laughs> you have to not only buy the bag, you have to buy that strap if you want that entire look. So it puts it at a little bit of a higher price point, but, but I think that, and I've said this many of times, I sound like a broken record, I know, but Lueves leather is absolutely out of this world. It is insane. And I think that this bag is stunning. The crazy thing is, is that it has a, um, a gold, a gold zipper. You would think it would be all black, uh, but it has a gold zipper. So I like the fact that it has a little peekaboo gold in there, but altogether, the fact that you have black on black on black, and then you add that donut chain on there. And the chain I think is like 550 bucks or 500 bucks. I don't know. I don't care, but <laughs> I love the way that it looks and I am a sucker for these puzzle bags. So the black on black on black on black. I think it is just, oh, it looks, it looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so that brings me to my next one and that is the Celine Small Cabas Phantom Tote in the color gray. Now, I'm a huge fan of Celine as well. I no longer have any of their bags in my collection, uh, but I'm a huge fan of their leather. But this Cabas Tote, I mean, Come on, it's a tote, right? It's a tote, and I mean, I've seen so many reviews on this bag. A lot of people that have this bag in their collection, they swear by it, they say that it's one of the most comfortable. And what I really like about the small size, because there are different sizes that you can go for, the small size, is not that small. It's very, it's, it's a very misleading uh, name because it's actually quite large. And I love the fact that you can fit everything and the kitchen sink. You have this insanely beautiful leather. Uh, I think uh, I've, I've heard a few people say that it's a little bit on the heavier side just because you do have that suede interior and obviously it being an, a full leather tote, it can get heavy. Uh, so I imagine if your kitchen sink, <laughs> if you're carrying everything, it's going to make for a heavy bag. But even even with all of that said, I really like the simplicity of it. it. I think it is just absolutely gorgeous. So that's the one that I have been doing the most research on these last couple of weeks, these last couple of months. I just cannot get enough of it. I find myself going onto the Celine website and just staring at the bag like, why? <laughs> why? You know, do you guys do that as well? Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Let me know if you guys do the same thing because sometimes I'm just like, I log in, I put it in my basket and I'm like, dude, no, <laughs> you gotta relax. Relax a little bit, you know? You're not gonna buy it just yet. Uh, but I think that it is a, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. And in that gray, um, I just think, I think it looks insanely, insanely gorgeous. So the next one, I have my list, that's why I keep looking down. Uh, the next one is the Gucci 1961 Jackie in the, I'm thinking about either the medium or the small, 
but in the natural grain leather. So I remember when the when the revamped version of the Jackie first came out, huge, huge fan. Um, and I thought about going for it, but I was a little bit apprehensive just because I wasn't too fond of how shiny the leather was. Uh, and then I saw that they came out with the natural and the natural, I think it is just unbelievably gorgeous. Um, I really like the small size because I don't think it's like this tiny little bag, but I absolutely love the medium. Uh, they are a little bit higher up on the on the price point. I think that the medium is thirty six hundred, if I'm not mistaken. But it's just like this hobo style, uh, almost like a crescent moon bag, or it is a crescent moon bag. I think that's how they have it on the website. So here we go again. Like really. <laughs> I am never going to, I'm never going to say never to any other bag ever again. Like I have totally learned my lesson. Uh, but the, the, uh, the natural leather, I think it is beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it in the green. And I also love it in the, um, I think it's the, they have it under, I think it's camel or caramel. If one of those two, I can't remember. Uh, but that color, both of those colors, I think are just so incredibly beautiful. And the medium, I think, is the one that speaks to me the most, just because it is a little bit larger and I feel like I can fit a little bit more in there. I imagine it would be a little bit heavier. Uh, I haven't seen this bag in person, but so far with the, the videos that I've seen and with the articles that I've read and just staring at it on the website, it just keeps getting more and more beautiful to me. Uh, and I, I, th I think it's stunning. I think it is absolutely stunning. And that pebbled leather just really adds something. It adds a little, another like degree of oomph to the bag, in my opinion. I don't know, something that the shiny leather just doesn't give it. I'm not knocking the shiny leather by any means whatsoever because it is still a beautiful bag. And even the, uh, the monogram with the fabric, I think those are beautiful too. In general, the Jackie 1961 is a stunning handbag. Uh, but that grain leather or that uh, grain leather, that natural leather is just, I don't know, it adds a little something to the bag that I um, i really do appreciate, <laughs> absolutely. Now the next bag, I'm not gonna spend too much time on only because I have talked about it quite a bit over the last few years, but I am talking about the Fendi baguette, the regular size. And initially I didn't know if I should go for the fabric or if I should go for the leather, but after much research, after much uh, deliberation, uh, I have decided to go for the leather version. And really it's because I feel like the leather might end up aging a lot better as time goes by. Um, I did have the Mama Baguette years ago, and uh, the, the fabric was wearing beautifully, especially for as old as that bag was. So I don't think that the fabric is going to wear funky either, but between the two, I find that the that the leather might end up wearing a lot better as time goes by. And I sincerely, even though I don't have this bag yet, uh, I sincerely see it, I sincerely consider this bag becoming like a forever bag. Like that's how big of a fan I am of the baguette. You guys know how I feel about the red sequence one that I have. So uh, the leather one um, <laughs> definitely I feel is gonna be like a staple in my collection once, uh, once I decide to go for it. But uh, as far as the colors go, uh, I really love it in the black. I think that black with that gold hardware, you guys know it's one of my favorite combinations. I think it's beautiful. I also absolutely love it in the white. Uh, and I also like it in the beige. Now the beige is currently sold out, if I'm not mistaken. Last time I was on the website, which was a couple days ago, it said sold out and I didn't see any, any other like beige on there, but I would really, I would really like it in beige just because I do have a lot of black bags. I do have a lot of black and gold, you know, that black and gold combo. And I think that the beige would add a really nice freshness to my collection, even though I have other brown bags, you know, but this one, it just, it's a different shade. And I think uh, with, uh, with the gold hardware, it would complement it very, very nicely. But um, yeah, the Fendi baguette, I mean, come on. It's, it's very spacious. It has a great price point for being all leather. I love the fact that you have two different straps you can, and you can take both straps completely off and add a different strap too. So I feel like you have a lot of versatility with this bag and not to mention it is absolutely a classic. It is iconic. So huge, huge fan of the Fendi baguette. Now, number seven would be a Chanel mini flap, but I would really like to go for it in a tweed. And I know that they release tweed every single year. Uh, but for me personally, that would probably be the last bag that I would go for from Chanel. And that would be the bag to 
complete my ideal Chanel collection. Uh, I love their tweed and I have seen some over the years that I really like, but none to where I am so inclined to want to go purchase them. Nothing really speaks to my soul. Nothing really makes my heart sing. So I feel like once I see the mini flat bag in that tweed, in the tweed that, that only my heart will know when I see it, uh, then I will end up going for it. And I, like I said before, I honestly see that being the last Chanel bag that I get to complete my, uh, my Chanel handbag collection. But I love Chanel's tweed. Obviously, it has a ton of uh, history to uh, to the material, and uh, I just think that they're I think that they're very very beautiful. I know some people have said that they're a little bit more delicate. Uh, you do have to be a little bit more careful. But even with all of that said, I am still a huge huge fan. And um, yeah, I mean, there, I was kind of close. I was close for the houndstooth one that came out. What was it? Two or three years ago, the black and white. Oh my god, that bag was beautiful absolutely beautiful but I think I want some color in there a little bit of color maybe if it was like black white and red oh <laughs> hold the phones that would be like the ideal tweed for me for sure and I definitely don't want to go for it in the regular size because I'm not going to be spending nine or ten grand on a fabric bag from Chanel I don't care I mean I think that they're beautiful but this girl is not going to do it so for me going for it in the mini size is a little bit friendlier on my wallet and I still get that history with the tweed and I also like the size of the minis I think that they're I think that they're fabulous because they still fit all of my junk in there no problem and you have that little bit of color you have that little bit of fabric and um I think I think it works <laughs> I think it absolutely works but the Chanel uh, mini the Chanel mini flat bag in a tweed would be absolutely heavenly uh all right so that brings me to number eight and number eight is the one that I said at the beginning of the video that I'm still kind of up in the air about. I've had it on my wish list for like the last six or seven years. Uh, I have come close to purchasing it, but even then I feel like something always holds me back. And I am talking about the Hermes or the Hermes Garden Party. All right, I know some of you guys are like, why are you calling it Hermes? Because I am, all right? It's, it's, I know that it's Hermes. Uh, but the Hermes Garden Party, um, I, I love a good tote. We've established that throughout this video, right? And we've established that throughout my entire, my entire time on YouTube for these last bazillion years. Uh, but the Garden Party in the size 30 I think it's a perfect size. It's very, very simple. And even though I don't agree with some of, uh, or with uh, Hermes's, you know, kind of uh, marketing tactics, if you will, it, they work, all right? They absolutely work. I'm not trying to take anything away from them. Um, but I also I also have to give them credit when it comes to their, to their quality. Uh, and I've seen some of these garden parties and they are just absolute, they are delicious delicious. I don't want it in black. I don't want it in gold. I would go for this bag in a bright, bold color. I think it would look fantastic in a blue, in a purple. My God, who am I? A purple, uh, an orange. I mean, I think it would look absolutely beautiful in this bright, bright color, uh, just because I feel like the color of the leather would just speak volumes and because it is so simple, you know, and it's not, I don't think it's an overrated handbag by any means whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't have a ridiculous price point either, uh, but I, I am very much so a fan of the, of the Hermes Garden Party. I think it's beautiful, you know, I think it's beautiful. I know some people are like, oh my God, it's so simple. It is simple, <laughs> but, that's the beauty of some of these bags. You don't have to have a bunch of bells and whistles to make it look to make it look good. You know, it doesn't have to have all these things in order for it to stand out. Sometimes a simple bag just speaks everything that you needed to speak and it doesn't need anything else, you know? So um, yeah, I don't know. I just go back and forth. I've seen a few of them on the pre-love market um, and I actually saw one like two days ago on uh, on Fashion File, uh, and I was like, oh, should I go for it? Should I go for it? I don't know. It was green, but um, I held off because I don't know what it is that just kind of, I don't know, I, I hesitate. I always hesitate when I think about going for this bag. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I feel the way that I feel, um, but I still think it is an 
unbelievably beautiful black a beautiful bag it's just it's gorgeous because again it is so simple so that's my number eight it's just it's hanging there it's kind of in the wind it's like hanging on by a thread onto my wish list it's like should i put on the other hand <laughs> and let it be or should i completely you know let go and say goodbye to uh, <laughs> to wanting to get a, an Hermes uh, garden, par garden party. But anywho, that does it for my 2023 handbag wish list. Did any of these bags surprise you? Did any of the silhouettes or the materials surprise you? If they did, let me know in the comment section down below. And I really don't see myself like in a hurry to add any of these bags to my collection. It'll be interesting to see if they make it onto my shelf this year. Although there are maybe one or two, actually there's a total of three that are in my cart ready to hit checkout, <laughs> but I don't know if I should just go for them just yet. I wanna hold off a little bit. I'm gonna see how long I can hold off till. Uh, but um, yeah, I just, you know, I've done quite a bit of research on many of these bags. There are others that I don't wanna do research on them once whatsoever, because I feel like even though I can appreciate the research and it's always, it's always fun, it's always great to get, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly on these bags, Sometimes I feel like if I research them way too much, when I do get them, it's not as exciting as it was, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago when I would buy a handbag. You know what I mean? Like there's so much information on it that it's not even a surprise anymore. It's not, it's not, you don't get those warm and fuzzies. You don't get those butterflies as much as you used to with some of the bags. I'm not saying with all of them, uh, but I don't know. But anywho, I would love to know what were, what are some of your, uh, what are some of the bags that you have on your wish list for this year? Let us know in the comment section down below. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.